I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? Welcome to Operation this Get Ahead's 32nd Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Virtual Celebration. Pull up a seat and what share the link. What you now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. And whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint. And that blueprint serves as the pattern, as the guide. As Good afternoon, my name is Jim Garner, and my job today is to introduce the mistress of ceremony. Cherise is the youngest child and the only daughter of the late Jesse Van der Hall, a real dear friend of mine, and her mother, Dorothy Van Hall. Before her formal training, she was educated at home by values steeped in Southern roots and the AME Zion Church, of which she serves as a trustee in Jackson Memorial AME Zion Church. i never forget uh, when I was um, taking Ashanti, my granddaughter, to college at Syracuse University, um, I had asked Reese, could it be possible could we visit uh, SUNY uh, Law, uh, Albany? And she said, I would make that happen. And sure enough, we left Syracuse that afternoon and went directly to Albany, and she had made that happen. Let me say that um, I know Cherise. I remember her when her mother and father asked me to see if I could help get her into law school. And sure enough, look at her today. It is my great honor to introduce to you again our Mrs. of Ceremony, Ms. Reese Van Hall Wilson. I'd like to thank Mayor Garner for that introduction. I've known him all my life, or should I say he's known me all my life. Um, often when I speak to him, I hear my father, and last night we were on the phone, and he said to me, you know, we have to meet at the African American Museum to do a taping for the OGA luncheon. And I said, I know, you have to be there between five and seven, don't forget. And he says, okay. He says, do you know who's introducing you? And I said, you are. And he starts laughing. <laughs> you all know that laugh. And he says, someone told you. And I said, someone told me. Um, that's him. He's always keeping a secret, always ready to surprise me and, and looking after me. And um, I'm thankful that he has been in my life. So after that introduction uh, by Mayor Garner, there's no other way to start a black program off but to have an invocation. So I'd like to invite the bishop, Philip E. Elliott of the Antioch Baptist Church before us to give us a prayer for today's festivity. Greetings and welcome to the 32nd Operation Get Ahead historic MLK celebration. Martin Luther King Jr., a hero from our communities of faith and the communities at large. It is my privilege to present the invocation. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, how we love you and how we thank you, how we extol you, we lift you up. You said, and we have learned, that in all of our ways we should acknowledge you and you would direct our paths. So we ask for your presence and we acknowledge you right now. Because without you, there would be none of us. So right now, we ask for your blessings upon our 32nd celebration, that you would get the glory and that the community at large will be edified. So we pray in your high and holy and powerful name. Amen. We will have an official welcome by Miss Olita Wingate. She will come before us and also provide a statement of purpose for today's festivities. A warm welcome is never incomplete without warm words. 
So it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to Operation Get Ahead's Incorporated 32nd Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Awards Program. We commemorate the life, the dream, and the legacy of a man that made a change in American history. This year, we are, we are coming to you virtually. Yes, we have all experienced unprecedented situations with this pandemic and have been challenged to rely on social media to conduct our awards program. With that being said, I ask you to watch how OGA honors the men and women that had and have made contributions to our community by their untiring efforts to keep the dream and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. alive. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. Now we will have several greetings brought to you by our elected officials. The first will be the Honorable Waylon Hobbs Jr., Mayor of the Incorporated Village of Hempstead. Hello, I am the Village of Hempstead Mayor, Waylon Hobbs Jr. I want to welcome you to OGA's MLK Annual Celebration. We're doing it virtually this year, but listen, in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, let us remember as a diverse community here in the Village of Hempstead that we are to constantly be reminded that we should judge people for the content of their character and not the color of their skin. Unity is so important. And so as we honor this day, let's promote and push unity in our community. Thank you so much. I'd like to now, I'd like to now introduce the Honorable Dorothy L. Goosby, Senior Councilwoman for the Town of Hempstead. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here and I congratulate you, my sister, my sister who has been so much involved in this celebration. She wanted to make sure that it's always held on his actual birthday, which is January 15th. So Tina Hodge Bowes, who works so hard for everyone, she takes great care of the seniors, and that is something that Dr. Martin Luther King would love, something that she's doing that gives so much to our residents here. Thank you, Tina, and congratulations. And congratulations to all of those who are receiving this honorary degree today. I'm calling it degree, a degree because it's worthwhile, and it's something I'm sure that you will always take and be happy that you have it. Never forget Dr. Martin Luther King, who has wonderful, wonderful work so hard for each and every one of us, and he even gave, he even gave his life for it. So congratulations, all of you, the honorees that are being honored today. God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, I'd like to bring before you the Honorable Bruce Blakeman, our new county executive. I'm Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman, and I'm here at the African American Museum in Hempstead, New York. And on behalf of the almost 1.5 million residents of the County of Nassau, I want to congratulate Operation Get Ahead on the 32nd anniversary of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast. And I want to thank them for all their hard work for the community, and I want to thank their leader, Tina Hodgeballs for her leadership in running that operation and having that breakfast. We are with you. God bless you all. God bless America. Thank you so much. Next, we have the Honorable Don X. Clavin, Supervisor for the Town of Hempstead. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Don Clavin, the Town of Hempstead Supervisor. As we represent the town of Hempstead with 800,000 strong, we want to take the time to thank Operation Get Ahead and all of you for participating today. Though we'd all like to be in person, of course, it's a virtual program, but it's just as important. Today, we not only remember and honor the legacy of Martin Luther King, but we're also honoring individuals in our communities that are doing a tremendous job. So sit back, enjoy the program, and stay safe. Ladies and gentlemen, the Senator from the 6th District from New York State, Honorable Kevin Thomas. Hi, this is New York State Senator Kevin Thomas, 
and I proudly represent the community of Hempstead in the State Senate. I want to thank Operation Get Ahead and the African American Museum of Nassau County for hosting today's celebration of the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. On August 28, 1963, Dr. King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. His powerful words still resonate with us today. On that day, Dr. King told us, now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. Now is the time to make real the promise of democracy. We cannot ignore the fierce urgency of Dr. King's message. Now is the time. We have endured years of political division, injustice, and repeated attacks on our democracy. As we are reminded of these truths, the arrival of MLK Day seems more significant this year than perhaps ever before. Dr. King's life and legacy call us to remember the power of our collective voice. Voting is an essential part of our democracy's infrastructure, and we cannot afford for our voices to be stripped away. As state legislatures throughout the country begin their sessions, we must remain vigilant. We must work together to support our communities, defeat injustice, take down racial barriers, and defend our rights to vote, earn, and learn. Dr. King's message is a message of both urgency and hope. As we remember him today, we must not rest. As Dr. King told us, let us therefore continue our triumphant march to the realization of the American dream. Thank you and God bless. Family, we have a Uniondale Knight with us today, Assemblywoman Taylor Darling, representing the 18th Assembly District. Hello, I'm Assemblywoman Taylor Darling, your Assemblywoman, and I could not be more excited about celebrating a fixture in our community in District 18, Operation Get Ahead, or OGA, as we like to call it. I am really just astounded by the programming and everything that they're able to provide to our community, especially to our seniors, especially right now as we can't all be together and, and collaborate and feel that great energy. I was really looking forward to being with you all on Saturday, January 15th, but you made the safe and correct call to postpone the event. So I just wanna say that Martin Luther King Jr., very important in my life, definitely inspired me as my Morehouse brother and as one of the greatest leaders that we've seen in, in our, our time. And we're in a very precarious time where we we need each other and we need leadership right now, right? Um, we're hearing so many conflicting things and it just really hits home how much our community organizations are needed so that information can be distributed, supplies can be distributed, and people can not feel so isolated and alone. So I just really wanna thank all of the recipients of the awards. Um, they are all very well deserved. I have to thank the fabulous uh, Mrs. Tina Hodge Bowles, Mrs. Wingate, and my wonderful neighbor since 1994, Mrs. Violet Avery, who is just anything she's involved in always becomes amazing. So I look forward to being with each and every one of you soon. Um, please feel free to contact us whenever you need anything. We are at 33 Front Street and we are here to serve you. The legislator from the second district from the Nassau County Legislature, a sister for sure, the Honorable Sela Bino. Greetings, I'm Legislator Sela Bino, and I am humbly in service to Nassau County's second district, and it is indeed my honor to be able to address you today. I'd like to first start out by thanking all of the leaders with Operation Get Ahead for its tireless service to the greater Hempstead community. They have worked day in and day out over the last 30 years to make sure that the social and cultural and recreational needs of our seniors are met. I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate all of the awardees and the families of our dearly departed honorees. 
Each and every one of them has embodied and exemplified the servant leadership of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And so it is very befitting that we would spend this holiday in commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King to celebrate all of those servant leaders. Once again, congratulations and may God keep you and bless you. Thank you for those greetings. We now will have the Honorable Elaine Phillips, our newly elected County Comptroller. So I'd like to thank Bishop Elliott for welcoming me here today, but most importantly, um, as your new Nassau County Comptroller, Elaine Phillips, I'd like to congratulate and say that I'm so honored to be here today with Operation Get Ahead and the Reverend Do Dr. Martin Luther King's 32nd uh, celebration of our community. To all the honorees today, all nine of you, um, thank you first and foremost for all the good that you do in our community. Um, please keep up the good work. Uh, we need you in our communities. Um, to Tina, to Tina Hodge Bowles, you know, I had the honor of being sworn in last week, and I stood in the cradle of aviation amongst some pioneer women, Amelia Earhart, Sally Ride. Today, we're honoring here in this museum, Catherine Goble Johnson. I see Rosa Parks right behind me, and. These are the women that blaze the trails for women like us. And as I see it, Tina is one of those women. I'd also like to acknowledge Ms. Avery and Ms. Wingate for all your hard work for making today happen. And Shelly, thank you for making today happen. So may God bless you, and may God bless this great county of Nassau County. Now, as you all know, if we were in person, the room would be filled with icons, dignitaries, living legends, clergy, family, and friends. Of course, we're not always able to recognize everyone, but I am going to ask the Bishop Philip E. Elliott to come up and give those acknowledgments today. Of course, if anyone is left out, you can go after him and not me. <laughs> Next, I'd like to acknowledge um, the political guests that have weighed in, that are supportive of, and who are part of this 32nd historic Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, celebration. Bishop Wayland Hobbs Jr., Mayor of the Incorporated Village of Hempstead, Nassau County Executive Mr. Bruce Blakeman, Councilwoman Dorothy Goosby, Senior Councilwoman Dorothy Goosby, County Legislator Kevon Abram, Senator Kevin Thomas, County Legislator Sela A. Bino, Town of Hempstead, Mr. Don X. Clavin Jr., Town of Hempstead Councilman, Mr. Thomas E. Mascarella, Town of Hempstead Receiver of Taxes, Ms. Jean C. Driscoll, Town of Hempstead Councilman, Mr. Anthony P. D. Esposito, and Town of Hempstead Town Clerk, Ms. Kate Murray. Assemblywoman Taylor Darling, Nassau County Comptroller Elaine Phillips, and New York State District Attorney, Mr. Patrick O. Dono. Thanks for these moments to acknowledge our invited guest and let us celebrate in this 32nd year of celebration. There is no future without our youth. Next, the Youth Teen Dance Company under the direction of Miss Denise Howell will render a performance for you all. Thank you.
is love Between two worlds I do belong My father was rich and white He forced my mother late one night
trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Cause this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. Joy in my soul, God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Cause this means war. This means. Family, friends, partners in the struggle, we're now at that time in our program where we will bestow uh, several awards to members of our community, some of them still with us and others who are not. To start off with a memorial, I'd like to ask the Reverend Dr. Soretta C. McKnight to come before us. Greetings, beloved. The Bible declares in the third chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes that to everything there is a season, a time and a purpose for everything under the heavens. Well, beloveds, we are in Kingian season now, where we go to celebrate the life and the legacy of the 20th century prophet, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We know that today would have been his 93rd birthday. However, his words, his life's work still, still is very relevant today. And Operation Get Ahead, for the past over 30 years under the dynamic leadership of Mrs. Tina Hodge Bowles, has been commemorating and celebrating those in our communities who have truly demonstrated that their life's work matches that of Dr. King in true Kingian fashion. This year, beloveds, because we are in such unprecedented times, that when we think of Corona, no longer will blue skies, a beach, or a bottled beverage with lime come to mind. 
but rather this virus that has decimated the world. Well, the struggle still continues, and in true Kingian fashion, we have honorees that are being celebrated posthumously because they just left us too soon. The Tyree Curry Education Award is being presented posthumously to the Reverend Ronald Simpkins, the immediate past pastor of the Free Wheel Baptist Church and an administrator, an education administrator extraordinaire. He has served our communities and our children for decades. The Tyree Curry Art and Culture Award is being presented posthumously to the elder Tyrone E. Shelton Felder. He was a cook, a caterer, a chef, a designer of hats, a true Renaissance man who enjoyed working with our children. Then, beloved, another of OGA's most prestigious awards is the Gerard P. Burnett Entrepreneur Award. This year, it is being presented posthumously to the one, the only, Bishop David B. Gates. His legacy continues. He was the esteemed senior pastor of the Miracle Christian Center. He was also an administrator's administrator and a true leader in our communities. There was only one, Bishop David B. Gates. Then, beloved, the Gerard P. Burnett Community Service Award is being presented posthumously to the Bishop William Albert Watson, Jr., who has been the esteemed pastor of the St. John Baptist Church and needless to say, a community advocate and activist. And the final posthumous award this day is being presented to one who has been a keeper of the culture. And we're talking about the Rosa Parks Memorial Award. And it is being presented, beloved, to one who, she was just fabulous. That's the only way you could put it. She was a keeper and educator of the culture. She is certainly a one half of the Joycetta and Julius Pierce African American Museum in Hempstead. And we're talking about the life and legacy of Mrs. Joycetta Pierce. These are our posthumous celebrants for 2022 as we commemorate, as we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King, we also celebrate these honorees who were just gone too soon. Enjoy the rest of the brunch, beloved. And by all means, please stay blessed. Thank you, Dr. King, and happy birthday. It's a voice that comes from deep down within. There's a cry asking why I pray the answers up ahead. Cause I know where I've been. But 
the riches We will, will be plenty Worth that price The price we have to pay Oh, dream in the future There's a struggle Struggle yet yet to win Use that pride in my heart Cause I know where I'm going Yes I do I know where I've been There's a road that we must travel A struggle we have yet to win Use that pride in our hearts To live the September tomorrow The first award presented today will be the Minister Gerard P. Burnett Entrepreneurs Award presented by Mr. Randy Stiff to the late Bishop David B. Gates. Good afternoon. Today I stand before you to present the award for the Gerard P. Burnett Entrepreneurs Award. And today, honoree goes to no other than Bishop Dr. David B. Gates. Dr. Gates was a generational leader here in the Hempstead community in Nassau and vicinity. Dr. Gates is the, was the pastor of the Miracle Christian Center in, of Hempstead, and he also was the president of the Hempstead School Board of Education. He also served as the special advisor to our town supervisor and our executive assistant to the mayor of the incorporated village of Hempstead. Dr. Gates was a bishop to all of Hempstead and he is greatly missed. So I stand humbly and proudly to present the award today in memory of Dr. David B. Gates to his wonderful mother, Dr. Phyllis Young. Congratulations. Good evening. I would just like to thank uh, Ms. Tina Hodge Bowles and OGA uh, for this award tonight. Um, I'm very humble. Um, Maya Angelou said something, and she said, she said, people do not remember what you said. They might not remember what you did, but they remember how you made them felt. And so tonight, I say that with all of my heart, I feel so blessed to be able to receive this award in honor of my son, because he was a community um, activist. He gave his all to the community, and his last sayings he always would say if i can help somebody along the way then i know my living will not be in vain so thank you so much for this honor god bless you the minister gerard p burnett community service award honoring bishop william a watson jr posthumously Presented by Mr. Gerard Burnett. Good afternoon. 
Uh, it is my privilege to be here today to present this beautiful award, the Gerard P. Burnett Community Service Award, posthumously, to the great Bishop William A. Watson. Bishop William A. Watson, Jr. is a native of Portsmouth, Virginia. William, Jr. is the fifth of seven siblings and the first male child born to Deacon William A. Watson, Sr. and Mother Cornelia Watson. Educated in the Virginia public school system, he relocated to Hempstead, New York, and earned a vocational degree from Manpower Development Training School, New Hyde Park, New York. William Albert Watson, Jr. studied and served faithfully unto the Lord, and in 1978 responded to the call to the gospel ministry. From 1996 to 2000, he served as the vice moderator of Nassau County, and from July 2000 to July 2003, he served as vice moderator at large of the Eastern Baptist Association of New York Incorporated. In October 2002, he was appointed vice president of Area 7 for the Empire Baptist Missionary Convention Incorporated, New York State. Reverend Watson also served as, a, as first vice president of the Conference of Clergy and served as chaplain for the incorporated village of Hempstead Police Department. Reverend Watson considers first and foremost that his responsibility was to bring souls to Christ. For the past 35 years, he served as pastor of the St. John's Baptist Church, Westbury, New York. February 12, 2018, the Apostolic Faith Church of God live on the Board of Bishops and Board of Presbytery, Suffolk, Virginia, met and unanimously agreed to appoint Reverend Dr. William A. Watson, Jr. as Bishop-elect for the New York Diocese. On August 12, 2018, Bishop-elect Watson was consecrated as Bishop of the Apostolic Faith Church of God, live on Suffolk, Virginia, Chief Apostle R. H. Cross, Sr., Presiding Prelate. Bishop Watson was a faithful man, father, brother, and all-around friend to everyone. He loved to laugh, but he also always kept it real. Bishop Watson will be remembered for his love, encouragement, and leadership. We thank him for being that one true friend and supporter. And for that, I award him posthumously with this award on today. I do accept this on the behalf of his family as they are unable to be here this afternoon. However, we, it is my honor to grant him with this award today. The Rosa Parks Award, presented by Minister Kenitha Pettis to the late Mrs. Joycetta Pierce. Joycetta Josephine Pierce hails from the great borough of Brooklyn, New York. She was the oldest of four brothers. You know she had to be fierce. She attended the Bishop McDonald Memorial High School in Brooklyn and Nassau Community College and finally ended at Adelphi University where she obtained her bachelor's degree. Joycetta worked at, the New, at New York Telephone Company for many years. After retiring, she and the love of her life Husband Julius started a private investigation firm in Freeport, New York. They worked side by side for many years. In 1994, until her death, she was the executive director of the African Atlantic Genealogical Society, TAGS, T-A-A-G-S. Yes, right. All right. In 2008 to 2014, she was the president of the Genealogy Federation of Long Island. The Pierces, Joycetta and her husband, Julius, are an institution of black history on Long Island. Together, they founded the African Atlantic, I say it again, Genealogical Society, TAGS. The couple helped hundreds of people find their personal ancestral connections. TAGS also manages the African American Museum of Nassau County. Using historical data, Joycetta's specialty was creating exhibits that felt familiar and hidden all at once. She was a member of Mensa, the High IQ Society, and wrote 10 books on the topic of African American history. Joyce Setter and her husband made history headlines recently 
when the African American Museum was renamed the Joyce Setter and Julius Pierce African American Museum of Nassau County in their honor. Okay. All right. Joyce Setter, we thank you. We thank you for many years of dedicated service to our communities and outstanding accomplishments and achievements. We appreciate you for your outstanding vision, dedication, and commitment to excellence. And we thank her for her generous time, support, and inspiration. Her smile was our warmth, her friendship our blessing, and her hands in the service of God and inspiration to us all. Forever in our hearts, Joycetta Pierce. This ward, Big Julie as I call him, is dedicated for your wife and you will accept in her honor. Yes, I will. Operation Get Ahead, Inc. 32nd Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award Celebration, Rosa Parks Award, presented on the 15th of January, 2022, to the family of our beloved keeper of the culture, Joycetta Pierce. The function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education, the Reverend Martin Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. OGA is progress, Tina Hodge Bowles, Executive Director. And this is the award Thank that you. is received. Thank you, very, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you very much for presenting the award to my loving wife, Joyce Sutter Pierce. The museum as itself mission is hidden history. I want to let you know a little bit of the hidden, hidden history. 38 or uh, maybe more years ago, there was no Martin Luther King celebration. We were only deciding that we we're going to try to, to promote a birthday celebration for Martin Luther King. My wife and I started our program presenting at the Freeport High School. And would you believe, hidden history here is that one of the first performers mm -hmm. at that program was a little gentleman that we know as Flavor Flay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he played the piano. Yes. <laughs> that was him. Also, I want to let you know that Joyce Setter Pierce, as I said, was a member of Mensa, smart as a whip, as we would say down south, smart as a whip. <laughs> and she could not be beaten as far as her knowledge and her uh, intent on what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you again for, my, for presenting to my loving wife, the presenter here at the African American Museum. And again, come back anytime and we will help you uh, understand some of the hidden histories that we have here at the African American Museum. Thanks again. Appreciate that. Bye bye. Thank you. Tyree Curry Educational Award, presented by Ms. Olita J. Wingate to Reverend Ronald Simpkins. Good day. This presentation of award is in memory of Reverend Ronald Simpkins. It is the Tyree Curry Educational Award, posthumously. I am truly honored to present this award to the late Reverend Ronald Simpkins to his wife, Reverend Verna Simpkins. He was a li living testimony to that of a man of God can be strong and yet still maintain humility. He often let you know that he was just an instrument used by God pointing souls to Christ. As an educator, he was dedicated and supportive of Operation Get Ahead Inc. He gave of his time as a youngster to OGA and continued as an adult to be supportive, both monetary as well as his presence to this organization, and we say thank you. I must not forget, Reverend Simpkin was a dear friend that made a long-lasting impression which continues to be in the hearts of OGA. On this day and years to come, we will keep his wonderful memory as a great treasure in our hearts and honor his memory throughout our lives. Thank you, Reverend Verna Simpkins.
for sharing the life and legacy of Reverend Ronald Simpkins. I present to you the Tyree Curry Educational Award in memory of Reverend Ronald Simpkins' life, service, and commitment to OGA. Praise the Lord, everyone. I want to thank the Operation Get Ahead Executive Director and Committee for this beautiful honor um, on behalf of my late husband, Reverend Ronald Simpkins, and also on behalf of the Free Will Missionary Baptist Church. We are so appreciative of your support. I know that he loved this organization, and on many occasions I attended functions with him. I'm sure he's looking down, looking above, looking down from above, also extending his thanks. God bless you and the work that you do. We wish you continued success. And thank you, Sister Alita Wingate, for making this presentation. God bless. Good afternoon to our executive director, Mrs. Tina Hodge Bowles, to the committee of this wonderful event this afternoon, to everyone assembled. Elder Tyrone E. Shelton Felder, the Tyree Curry Arts and Culture Award. Elder Felder was born in Brooklyn, New York, on January 7, 1965, to the late Mrs. Barbara Shelton. He was blessed to be adopted by Reverend Early B. Felder Sr. and Mother Nellie V. Felder. Tyrone attended and graduated from Uniondale High School in 1984. He furthered his education at Nassau Bosey's and he also attended the New York Food and Hotel Management School as well as the Sullivan College Culinary Arts School. Elder Felder was anointed with many gifts such as cooking, catering, baskets, and hat making and he established his own business, Love on Top, and began making beautiful hats for all the ladies in every church that he attended. He also established his own catering business, Pop Pop's Kitchen. He enjoyed the ministry of helping and serving at numerous churches for over 25 years. He was a, he was a chief adjutant, armor bearer, and spiritual father to many. He served at the House of Israel under the leadership of Bishop Paul, Paul Wells Sr. He sung with the Second Calvary Baptist Church choirs and the Pritchard Ensemble and many, many more. Later on, Elder Felder joined and served as a faithful member of the Blanche Memorial City of Praise under the leadership of Pastor Stella Mercado. Tyrone was a, yeek, a unique but serious individual. He was a no-nonsense, and he would always argue, but at the end of the day, he would call me and apologize and take the entire blame. We would act up, ask me to take him to ride and shop around and do this and do that. The next thing you know, he's putting me out his car. But at the end of the day, he'd call me and say, we always do what we do. We love each other and we'll never ever let each other down. So today I present this award to the family of Elder Tyrone E. Shelton Felder. We thank you to the Felder family for his legacy. We thank you for sharing him with OGA. Congratulations. Before we continue with the rest of today's awards, Ms. Shelley Brazley will come and introduce our speaker. We, I am so excited now to introduce our keynote speaker for the afternoon. Um, it is the world-renowned artist, globally known for his preaching and singing, but more importantly, locally. He is a philanthropist and he is such a friend to the community. He is the pastor of Perfecting Faith Church in Freeport, New York. 
and we are excited to hear the message, empowering message that he has in store for us today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Pastor Donnie McClurkin. God bless you. This is Pastor Donnie McClurkin, and it is my joy, my privilege, and my honor to celebrate along with Operation Get Ahead on this 32nd Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration, marking MLK Day in the United States of America. It's my joy to be able to sit before you and to be the keynote speaker and to bring your attention to the life, the ministry, and the mission of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. On this day that we're commemorating a great man, a great man that was born in 1929. On January the 15th, 1929, there was a male child born, not knowing that it was going to be a modern day 20th century Moses. This man would be born that would deliver people from bondage. This man would be born that would change the course of a world as well as, and especially for those of us here in the United States of America. His name is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A great man with a divine purpose, a purpose that superseded anything that could have ever been imagined. It was a man that had a goal that God had set in place to transform a nation, to make a cry that would call for justice that would circle the globe and surely impact these United States of America. Martin Luther King Jr., a man with a mission, a man with a purpose. Of course, we've gone through so many different transitions, so many different things that have transpired in our lives. But me being of the age that I am, 62 years old, me being born in 1959, I was able to see and I remember so many of the television news broadcasts of the civil rights movement and how it impacted the nation, how it had a nation divided, but a nation that united in the civil rights and for a good cause, for a great cause, for a holy cause. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination 100 years later. This nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I remember being transfixed, sitting in front of the television with my mother, a young man, four years old, six years old, watching the march over the bridge, watching the water hoses, watching the dogs unleashed upon the protesters that protested peacefully. 
I remember being confused, not understanding what was going on and why it was happening. And I remember my mother explaining to me about this one man who was leading the charge by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. I remember how it impacted me. I remember the different threats that were going on. I remember how we were dealing with so many racial upheavals and there were so many cries out against the black Americans. There were so many different things that took place that did not give us equality. And my mother took the time to explain to a young man, a young preteen boy, about what was taking place in our world and in our country. And how she made me to understand that this man was causing attention to be drawn to injustices. That this man was raising his voice and leading a charge that would cause the lives of men, women, and boys and girls throughout this country to be transformed, to be transfixed, to be changed. One man. It's amazing how God can use one man to make such a great change and link so many great men and women to the cause that caused us to be able to live in this America. One man by the name of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, yeah. and the crooked places will be made straight, yeah. and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope, and this is a faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day, this will be the day when all of God's children be able to sing with new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. It's important that we remember this, that this day that we are celebrating, this MLK day, that it comes with a great price. It comes with a hefty charge. It comes with bloodshed. It comes with marching. It comes with a mind and a determination to change things from the way that they were to the way that they should be. I want to remind every one of you that this man and the men that marched with him, they had a specific moniker. They had a specific position. In the civil rights movement of the 60s, just about every man that marched along with Dr. King, every one of them just about had a reverend in front of their name. Reverend Abernathy, Reverend Shuttlesworth, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and the list goes on. They had a holy calling. They had a divine purpose. And they understood that this was bigger and larger than any one man. But it took the one man to lead the charge. They prayed. They sought the Lord. They made sure that they peacefully protested and made their point and brought attention to injustice. But they did it in a holy way with a righteous charge. Yes, 
Dr. Martin Luther King, the modern day 20th century Moses, led a charge that caused attention to be drawn, attention to be drawn to the injustices and led us into a place of prominence that we now live. Yeah, it was amazing, but it's nowhere near over. It was amazing, and we remember it, and we, we memorialize it, but it's nowhere near over. Yeah, we still have to get to the point where we overcome. During the march, there was so great a cloud of witnesses that marched along with this great man. From celebrities to dignitaries, white, black, yellow, brown, red, it was a massive move, a massive move. And it took the grace of God in order to make this happen. It took the grace of God in order to bring this about. It had to be God. For all that was in it, it, all that was, was was in jeopardy, it had to be God. For all that was in place, it had to be God. For the sacrifice that was going to be made, it had to be God. For men and women to forget about their own safety, to make sure that the righteousness and the civil rights of all were upheld, it had to be God. And so we commemorate this day. We commemorate the move. We commemorate the mission. We commemorate the man, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, many have risen up since then and many things have taken place. And now in this 21st century, we find ourselves almost in the same situation, having these different nuances that are causing us to go backwards in time. The, redistrict, the redistricting of many different places so that the voters cannot adequately vote. The voters right bill being held up in Congress. We're dealing with so many different things that have the reminiscence of the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Ah, many things have changed, but there's so many things that are egregiously wrong. But we must remember, we must remember the man we must remember the mission. We must remember the ministry of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we must move on and make sure that everything that has been fought for, everything that men have bled for, everything that Dr. King died for, continues on. Continues on through us, continues on with a total commitment from every one of us to never let that happen again. To live free to demand equality, to righteously stand and declare the will of God for every man to be treated equally. That's our job. That's our position. That's the purpose. That's who we are. I was blessed to be able to become very, very endeared and close friends with Mrs. Coretta Scott King. I was blessed to be able to sit at her feet and her to call me son. I was blessed to be able to hear her give me story after story of Dr. King. I'm blessed to know her daughter, Bernice. I'm blessed to have been able to sit in her presence and to be able to glean from her and to hear the riveting tales of this great man. To not only hear the tales, but have the humanity of him revealed to me. And it was Bernice King, his youngest daughter, that reminded me just a few years ago that everyone lauded Dr. King as the civil rights movement, this civil rights leader, but they forgot that he was a man of God. They forgot that he was a pastor of a church. They forgot that he was a preacher of the gospel. And that's what made him so significant, is that he held up a banner that could only come from God, he spoke the word, not just as an orator, but as a preacher of this gospel. And he preached the good news of equality. He preached the good news of the civil rights that are due to every man. He preached the good news of the love of God. Yes, Bernice King, I agree with you. He was much more than just a civil rights leader. He was a preacher of the gospel. 
And that gospel, that good news is what we commemorate. That great man is what we commemorate. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If it had not been for God choosing that man, there's no telling, there's no accounting as to where we would be in this America. After over 400 years of, of enslavement and, and, and inequality and inequity, there's no telling where we would be. But in 1963, he stood in Washington, D.C. and declared that he had a dream. And that dream must come to pass. That dream must come alive again. He was more than just a dreamer, Martin the dreamer. No, no, he wasn't a dreamer. He was a visionary. Dr. King wasn't a dreamer for he was not asleep. He was a visionary who God had given vision to and given a mission to. And we honor that vision. And we honor that visionary. It was in 1968 that he stood in Mason's Temple. Mason's Temple, Church of God in Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. And gave his final prophetic message. The final prophetic message. And he said that I may not get to the promised land with you. But his eyes had seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And the next day he went into eternity. In that April morning of 1968. And although his life ended there, his words, his impact was indelible. It was indelible. It could not be washed away. In extinguishing his life could not wash away or wipe clean or change the course that was set by Dr. King. He was a man that was anointed by God. And then when God took him home, he left us to carry the banner. The banner did not drop to the ground. The banner did not fall to the ground. But we, we, the sons and daughters of Dr. King, we, the generations that were spurred on by Dr. King, we lift up a banner and we refuse to ever fall prey to inequality again. And it may cost some of our lives. It may. But you have got to believe that this God that called us into being, who empowered us to deal with 400 years of slavery and still survive, and not only survive, but thrive, and to rise up and to become the men and women of strength, the men and women of creativity, the men and women educated, the men and women gifted, the men and women that could build a nation. We will not fail to continue to push forward the dream, nay, the vision of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So as I close right now, as I close, we remember the different portions of the speeches, the riveting words that he spoke. We remember the mind, the heart, the heart, the mission, the mission accomplished by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And then we sit back and we see that we've got farther to go, but we shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome some, someday. Let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state, in every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spirit. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last.
Thank you, Pastor Donnie McClurkin, for those words. I hope that they will inspire everyone listening today. We have a special tribute next from the Northern Parkway Elementary School in Uniondale, New York, under the direction of Mrs. Denise Luther Williams. Hello, my name is Gloria Kazia Adesanya. Today, I'll be reciting this poem written by Maya Angelou, and the name is Still I Rise. You may write me down history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why you be set with gloom? Cause I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my own living room? Just like moon and like sun, the certainty of tides, like hopes breaking high, still I rise. Do you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? So there's falling down like teardrops, we can buy my soul full prize? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard cause I laugh like I got gold mines digging in my own backyard? You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rotten in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, swelling and welling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. My name is Grace, Adis Grace Graviella Adesanya. Hello, my name is Gloria Kazia Adesanya. Today we'll be reading this poem, They Didn't Do It Alone. History speaks the names of men, those who march and march with the King Jr. You can see lots of pictures too, but they didn't do it alone. Women marched too. Women protested and went to jail. Women housed and fed. Women taught and preached. Women organized and gave flyers. Women, too, were beaten and died. But they didn't do it alone. Wilbert Bobos. OGA is progress. We are born with the capacity to grow, to learn, to change. OGA is progress. Vo helped us to make progress every Wednesday with the OGA meetings that we had as a group with the seniors. He made it a joyful occasion. He made it a happy occasion. He was my sidekick. He was my buddy. And this award goes to a person that Wells deserve a, a really round of applause. Hey, OGA is progress. Bo, we love you. OGA loves you. And you have been a great help as far as making seniors in the Hempstead area and in the Long Island area because we come from all over. OGA is progress. And we thank you. We thank you. And we love you. And God bless you. On behalf of Executive Director Tina Hodge Bowles and the OGA Extended Family, we'd like to congratulate Carla Guerra, who is receiving the Advocate Award. She works tirelessly in family court for child underserved children and their families. Thank you so much, Carla, for the work that you do. OGA is progress. Good afternoon. As we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. on his birthday, it is my great honor to just present someone that I know and love dearly. I really don't have to introduce her, so I'm merely going to present her, uh, Rosalind Harrison. 
She's a product of the Westbury School District. She's a product of the Antioch Baptist Church. And she's just a wonderful young lady. Um, she um, is said she's an only child in her bio, but she has so many brothers and sisters, so I'm not sure that she's an only child. Roz is a very dedicated young lady to the Antioch Baptist Church, and I want to personally thank her for that. Uh, Bishop and I know her as one of our daughters. She thinks she's our biological daughter, and we just let it go at that. Whatever she decides to do, we let it go. Roz ha has many skills and talents, and she's dedicated to OGA and to the executive director, Ms. Tina Hodge Bowles, and to the chairperson of this wonderful event. I say congratulations on 32 years of service to our community. OGA is a wonderful uh, organization that has served our community, our schools, and our seniors. And I'm honored to at least be asked to present something to Roz, as she's always giving of herself to everyone and everything. Uh, Roz, would you come forward now? To receive your award. I'd like to present this beautiful award to Roz on behalf of the OGA um, organization. We thank you for all that you have done and for all that you do. And I forgot to say that she's an executive assistant to one of our pastors in Queens, uh, Reverend Jeffrey Thompson of the Amity Baptist Church. That's important. And she serves with dignity and with grace. Roz, we love you. We thank you for all that you do for any and everyone. You're always active and involved in everything. And that's a good sign. That's a good thing. We thank Miss Mary Harrison, your <laughs> mama, for lending you to us. God bless you and we love you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to present this year's Barbara Varese Powell Senior Civil Rights Award. This annual award is in memory of my mother, Barbara V. Powell Senior, who was an outstanding humanitarian, community activist, and freedom fighter of, the Hems of Hempstead during the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and she fought until she couldn't fight anymore. She served the community as the president of the Hempstead branch of the NAACP for more than 27 years due to her commitment to the village and dedication to the people. During her time, she led many campaigns, held various drives, and provided resources to uplift the community. My mother was not only an activist, but a voice for the voiceless. She taught us to fight for what's right and to fight for what we believed in. It is my honor and my privilege to announce this year's recipient, Miss Monique Davis. First and foremost, I would like to give all honor and glory to my God for making all of this possible and for placing the need to graciously serve others in my heart. I would like to thank Operation Get Ahead, the Executive Director, Mrs. Tina hodge Bowles, and board members for hosting this remarkable event. I am extremely honored and humbled to accept this prestigious recognition in receiving the Barbara B. Powell Senior Civil Rights Award. As a trailblazer and a civil rights warrior, she fought hard for the voiceless and showed love to others in need. I am blessed to have known and loved her. I have seen the light and power of her legacy live on through many lives she has touched, especially her children and granddaughter, especially her daughter, Barbara V. Powell, and thank you for recognizing me for this award. As a social welfare examiner, I strive to treat my clients with dignity, compassion, and fairness. For the past 19 years, I have truly enjoyed helping local community members seek out programs or help them identify alternatives to their dependence on assistance. As an NAACP Hempstead Branch Executive Board member, I am learning about the issues facing our communities. In closing, I would like to acknowledge all the encouragement, love, and support that I have received from my friends and family, especially my children and parents. Thank you all. Good afternoon. 
the, the 2022 Mary F. Grant Education Awardee in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is Ms. T. Ara Williams, a 28-year-old graduate of Howard University, a former, a former Lutheran Moody and Ernest Young financial service employee. We hope to help T. Ara amplify her tutoring business to educate little children and to build, build strong, good character in children through education. The dream Ms. Grant and Dr. King believed in. T you can email T. Ara at ti3rra at williams93 at gmail.com. Tiara wasn't able to be here tonight because she tutors on Monday through Wednesdays nights. Begin. OGA means Operation Get Ahead. Well, about 26 years ago, this couple that's being honored this afternoon decided to add on uh, for encouragement to Miss Tina Hodge Bowles and her team. They simply stated, OGA means our God is able. This special couple believe in helping and supporting each other for two are better than one because they have a better return for their labor. If either one of them fall down, one can help each other up. For them, teamwork is imperative because it brings about unity, understanding, required learning, teaching, discovery, growth, better relationships, respect, and eventually unavoidable change. OGA is grateful for your support over the years for we have experienced our God is able. We continue to grow as a team. The quality, not longevity of one's life is what's important. The quality. Over the years, they have learned to apply their spiritual gifts and nurture their children as well as grandchildren. They practice the same gifts in the Antioch Baptist Church as well as in the community at large. Bishop Elliot and Mrs. Sheila Deans Elliot share their love, kindness, understanding, compassion, true forgiveness, and patience to all. They applied the same gifts to help them to become effective mentors, counselors, advocates, and parent figures. Whenever exhaustion sets in, Bishop Elliot and Lady Elliot remain ready to lend a helping hand to all in need. Bishop Elliot and Lady Elliot, you are an inspiration to all who know you. Please come up. <laughs> Bishop Philip. E. Elliott, yes, pastor of the Antioch Baptist Church, and First Lady Dr. Sheila Deans Elliott, God bless you. Let the Lord continue to guide your steps. Congratulations. Thank you, Lainey. <laughs> Thank you, Lainey. Thank you. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you so very much, OGA. Uh, Miss Tina Hodge Bowles, this is truly a surprise. I had no idea that this was going to happen. We are honored to receive this award. Uh, on behalf of the Antioch Baptist Church, we uh, serve there and we serve with joy and we're hoping we're making a difference um, in our community and in the lives of the people that we are serving. We are eternally grateful for this beautiful award. And I just want to say thank you also, along with my wife and with my fellow alumni from Elizabeth City State University, Elaine. My college uh, roommates. They were college roommates, <laughs> and I used to have to eat their cooking. When I my cooking. 
She oh. can't cook. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, She's going to take the award back. <laughs> um, but I would also ask on my time here, thank you to all of you mm -hmm. in the Celebration Committee and to Tina and Elaine, thank you. But also I'd ask that we would continue to pray for Tina yes. as yeah. she's uh, going through challenges. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, she just texted in. But we want her to know that we love her. We're supportive of not only the organization, mm -hmm. but of, of Tina and Bo Amen. and Vo. Mm -hmm. So let's continue to pray for them. And yes. thank you for this acknowledgement. Thank you acknowledgement. so much. I appreciate it. Gotcha. You tried to go home. You tried to go home. <laughs> On behalf of the executive director of Operation Get Ahead, Tina Bowles, I'd like to um, Congratulate Beverly R. James. Uh, she is a surprise honoree and was not able to make it today. However, we want Ms. James to know that as the first African-American female district governor of Rotary 7255, we celebrate and salute you on this auspicious Dr. Martin Luther King celebration. This is the 32nd annual, and this is a special, special presentation for a very special sister. Congratulations, Beverly R. James. As co-chairperson of today, I thank Tina Hodge Bowles, the board of directors, the committee, the keynote speaker, Pastor Donnie McClurkin, the mistress of ceremony, Ms. Sharice Vanderhall participants on the program, and all of you that watched this year's virtual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Awards program. We were truly blessed in every way, especially recognizing our honorees. What more can be said? But thank you so very much, and may God continue to bless you and OGA for the service it gives. It's a great privilege to honor and serve OGA and our committee. We've had a challenging two years, but with the grace of God, we made it. Thank to our honorees and community. And we appreciate everyone being here and to our executive, Tina Hodge Bowles, as she will say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> so, Father, we thank you this afternoon for this grand occasion on the Operation Get Ahead 32nd Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award Celebration. We thank you for the leadership. We thank you for those who uh, received the awards. And we just bless you because we realize that we are a community. And uh, as we uh, stand together in unity, we believe that this is just a beginning of what we will do as a family and as a kingdom in, in, in God's army. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Message from the Journal Ad Committee. Thank you to all who've contributed to the celebratory journal for our 32nd Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Awards Brunch. Your continuous support is greatly appreciated and we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you to all community leaders, our area churches, businesses, government officials, and religious organizations. Special thanks to Amity Baptist Church, Jamaica, New York Reverend. Jeffrey S. Thompson, Pastor, Antioch Baptist Cathedral, Hempstead, New York Bishop Philip E. Elliot, Pastor, Destiny Travel, Hempstead, New York Ms. Tavia Thomas, Eastern Baptist Association of New York, Inc. Reverend, Philip B. McDowell, Moderator, First Baptist Church, Glen Cove, New York, Reverend Roger C. Williams, Pastor. Friendship Baptist Church, Brooklyn, New York, Reverend Dr. Craig B. Gaddy, Sr., Pastor. Hair Galore Salon, Hempstead, New York. Hempstead Union Free School District. Superintendent Ms. Regina Armstrong. Honorable Judge Andrea Phoenix. Lady Russ Cretion. Miracle Christian Center, Hempstead, New York, Dr. Jacqueline Gates and Apostle Phyllis Young. NAACP, Hempstead Branch. Perkins Limousine, Incorporated. Mr. Melvin Perkins, Owner. Sisters in the Struggle Doctor. Saretta C. McKnight. 
Southern Missionary Baptist Church, East Elmhurst, New York, Rev. Michael B. Johnson, S.D. John Baptist Church, Westbury, New York, Rev. Jenny W. Mays, Senior Minister. Stevenson Printing, Glen Cove, New York. The Hope Foundation, Inc. MS. Joan Goodman and Mrs. Patricia Durden Brown. True Light Missionary Baptist Church, Houston, Texas, Rev. Anthony F. Hallie, 2, Pastor. To the Union Baptist Church, Run Hempstead, New girl, York, Rev. Like Dr. Sedgwick V. Easley, Pastor. Zion Cathedral, Freeport, New York, Bishop Frank A. White, Pastor. All contributors of journal ads will receive a fully published journal upon completion. Thank you. OGA is progress. Ms. Rosalind Harrison. Journal Chair Lady. Mrs. Elaine Moore. Journal Co-Chair Lady.